Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English Learn to Speak English Like a Native. Join my VIP program. Commit to my VIP program. It's a good time. Make that commitment. Train with me. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com EffortlessEnglishClub.com The old year is leaving us. Last day of the year here in Japan. Goodbye to 2018. I guess it's symbolic. It's a it's a reminder here at the end of the year. of impermanence that means not permanent impermanence meaning that nothing in the I guess we could say nothing in the material world the physical world nothing in the material or physical world lasts forever nothing lives forever at least not in the physical world. Reminds us of our mortality. Mortality. Again, the same idea when we're talking about lives or our own life. Mortality is the reality, the truth that we all die, that everything ends, that all life ends. Again, not speaking spiritually, just speaking in terms of the material and physical world. On a smaller level, it just means that everything, everything changes. I mean, that's the other way of looking at impermanence. It's the reality of change. So even while you are alive... Things will change in your life. Your body will change. Your mind will change. You learn different things. Right? Every year you have new experiences and that changes you in different ways, changes your life in different ways, affects the people around you, so creates changes in their lives. Of course, this is happening to every single person and every single thing in the whole world, even just here on our own little planet. So things are changing, changing, changing. It is the reality of constant change. It's good to remember that. Sometimes we try to hold on too tightly. Hold on, you know, especially when we have something good. Of course, it's natural to want to hold on to good things. Very natural. But sometimes we hold on too tightly. Sometimes we just have to let things go open our hands so that more, possibly different good things will come to us. So it's a nice time of the year, symbolically, to let go. This is a good time of year to let go. Let go of past worries. Let go of past mistakes. To forgive yourself to forgive others and start fresh start the new year fresh and as you do that then of course it's time to make those resolutions you you let go you start fresh and then you got that new vision yesterday we talked about the process of, of 
kind of brainstorming, I guess you could call it. Of just dreaming big, being emotional, having fun, being playful as the first step for that. However, that's not the only step. You can't stop there. Unfortunately, in the world, there are people who do stop there. You know, they're, th- this is why sometimes people have a negative um, feeling about the word dreamer. If you describe someone, oh, he's a dreamer uh, in English. Sometimes that has kind of a it's it's a little bit of a negative feeling because it it communicates the idea that he is only a dreamer. This person you're talking about, ah, oh, he's a, he's such a dreamer. You know, it seems like that should be positive, a positive compliment, something that's very positive. It could be. But in fact, oftentimes it's actually said in a way that's a little negative. <coughs> And the reason is this, that there are a lot of people in the world who only dream, and this is, a, this is the problem. They're really good with their imagination. They can dream big. They can imagine all kinds of amazing things, starting an amazing business and being independent and uh, having great physical shape and fitness and on and on and on they dream and they dream and they dream and they dream and they're very enthusiastic. Uh, some of these kind of dreamers will love to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk about their big ideas and their big dreams. Again, nothing wrong with that, but the problem is this, that then a lot of them, and I know a few of these people myself from my own life, a lot of them never move beyond just dreaming. They only dream, and they dream, and they dream, and they dream, and then, you know, six months later or a year later, they've got a new dream, and they're super excited about that one, and then the next year, another dream, and it's just always dreams, 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 but never any action. Never any action, never any results, no discipline, no focus, no habits, no effort. See, that's the reason dreaming can be a little, uh, I don't, maybe dangerous is not the word, but um, kind of. If you focus too much on just the dreaming, it can be a little dangerous. Why? Because it's easy. It really requires no effort. It's very easy to just dream and imagine all these amazing things. But it's very difficult, usually, to make them happen. That first creation of imagining in your mind is much easier than the doing the work and the effort and the discipline and the persistence and all of those things to then make these things reality. So it's important to have both. We're going to move on now. We don't want to be stuck in the dream part too long. It's a nice first step, but we can't stop right there. So let's move on to part number two. Okay, so hopefully yesterday you did it. If not, go listen to yesterday's uh, show, podcast, and do all the things I I ask you to do, basically. Dream big about your life and the different areas of your life. Well, that's not enough. So next what I want you to do is this. The next step, I want you to again remember those dreams from yesterday. Hopefully you wrote them down a little bit or took some notes or you remember them. So those big dreams, those things that made you feel enthusiastic as you imagine them. Maybe it was starting a business. Maybe it was traveling around the world. Maybe it was speaking English very, very well. Maybe it was, you know, changing your body, your physical health and fitness. Maybe it was something with your family or dating or socially. Maybe, you know, hopefully several of those things. Okay, the next step I want you to do is this. For each of those dreams, one by one, remember the dreams again, get the vision, visual, get the sounds, saying, you know, talking powerfully, get the emotion and the feeling in your body. Then what I want you to do is think about character. 
look at that dream, that thing you're imagining, that you know, big dream, the big goal, the big vision you have. And think about what values, what deeper values, what deeper meaning, what deeper character is inside of that dream. I'll give you an example. Let's say you just your dream was, you know, to to be super rich. Super rich. And you imagine yourself in a in a incredibly luxurious, you know, rich condo at the top of a tall, tall building with lots of expensive furniture and clothing and everything first class. Okay, so that's the dream. You can see it. It makes you excited. Well, by itself, just that, that's, those are just things. And they're, it's a little bit shallow, right? If you only focused on those things only, uh, it would be very easy to become greedy. Because you just focus money, 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 and just buy things all the time. That's not going to make you happy long term. You know that. However, it doesn't mean your dream is wrong, okay? It doesn't mean you can't become rich like that. If if that really does excite you, okay, but I want you to now look inside that and see if you can find things that are deeper and more meaningful inside of that dream. So, for example, to become rich like that, very rich, you might have to develop a lot of self-discipline. You're going to have to work and work and work and work. So that dream, that vision you have, it's not just about luxury and expensive things. It's also about self-discipline. You've got to be very disciplined financially to create that vision. You're going to have to become either a very good investor or a good business person to make that kind of money. And, you know, one, the, probably the best way to, with, to be a great investor and a great business person is to contribute, right? Is to do something that's useful for other people. It's about contribution. When you create great contributions for other people, they will pay you money. So, maybe that vision of all that money, you know, that, that, that super nice place to live, maybe you could find a deeper value in there focused on contribution. I'm going to I'm not just going to make money. I'm not going to steal money, right? I'm not going to become a criminal to make that money. No, I'm going to do it in a way where I'm contributing to other people, making other people happier, making other people's lives more convenient. Something like that. So you can find the value or the character of contribution. Helping others, generosity. You could find that in that vision, that dream that you have. So you see what I'm saying? I want you to connect the dream, the vision that you had, all of them, the dreams that you had yesterday, the visions you had yesterday. I want you to connect each one to a couple, not just one, but to at least two deeper values or character traits. And of course, you know why, and we've been talking about it in the book that we're doing now, the book club. Because it's those deep character values that will bring you long-term happiness, long-term success, long-term purpose and meaning and love and connection. Right? Those are the internal things that are deep inside of you. The external things in the outside world, they're okay, but they're not going to make you happy. They're not going to give you love. They're not going to give you long-term happiness. It doesn't mean they're bad. It just means you need to connect them to something deeper inside of you that you need to develop or create inside of you or be. See, then you can have that image, that vision of uh, working hard and making lots of money, but now it has a much deeper meaning for you, a deeper purpose for you. It's not just about money, 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 things, things, things. That's a little part of it, but 
it's connected to contribution. It's connected to uh, loyalty to your family. It's connected to generosity and helping others. It's connected to uh, great self-discipline and possibly other things also. That's for you to decide. You have to decide. Those character traits, the values, what's most important to you. And it's the same thing with your physical health. Right, your, your physical health. It's great. It's really great to want to look good and feel good and be physically fit and be strong. Those are all good things. You know, we, you, you can imagine lots of good benefits for those. However, I want you to think of some deeper character traits. How will you use that energy? How will you use that health? How will you use that strength to create greater happiness for yourself and for the people you love? How will you use that strength and energy to contribute in some way to others? Right? I mean, a small example, if you're a parent, if you have more energy, well, you can use that energy to be a better parent to your children. You'll have more energy to play with them. Maybe you'll be more patient because you won't be so tired. So patience might connect to that goal of health and fitness. So you understand how this works, right? You're, you're looking at those visions, those big dreams that you had that were, that were really interesting and exciting to you. And now you're connecting them to something internal, deeper character traits, deeper values, deeper truths, deeper moral principles that will give you a much stronger feeling of purpose. It will make these visions, these dreams, much more meaningful and powerful for you long term. That's why it's important. So I want you to do that with each and every one, right? In all those different areas, your physical health, you know, money and finances, um, you know, social or your family or dating or marriage, whatever. Um, each area, English all of them connect them to something deeper I mean, you know effortless English members know power English course members know that in all of my courses I always connect my lessons to deeper values right deeper messages deeper topics it's very important to me too I decided this myself when I started Effortless English, that I'm not just going to teach vocabulary and I'm not just going to teach grammar. I'm not just going to teach pronunciation. Right? Those are important. Fine. I will teach them in a natural way, but I'm also going to use Effortless English as a way to teach deeper values so that I am contributing more to you, my Effortless English members and students and fans. I want to contribute more. So Effortless English for me is about contribution and contributing, you know, positive ideas, positive messages that will help you be more happy. So I want to make you and all Effortless English members happier and to give you ideas and tools and strategies and all these different things so that you will be great with your English speaking and and also happier and more successful in all parts of your life. So I, did, I decided that myself. When I was dreaming about starting my business and creating Effortless English and when I started the VIP program, I did this exact step and I connected it to deeper values, deeper principles, so that it would be much, much, much more powerful and meaningful for me and also for you when you join my VIP program or another course. And of course, you can do that at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go over to EffortlessEnglishClub.com and uh, join my VIP program. Even my pronunciation course um, has some deeper messages in there, a deeper purpose. You will learn to speak very well you improve your pronunciation and you'll also get some other great training that will help you be happier and stronger mentally and emotionally so join my VIP program pronunciation course 
Power English, any of them, at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. And I hope that example, you know, it shows you from my own example how what Stephen Covey was talking about in, in his introduction is very powerful and so important. This is why I think people feel lost a lot of times in life. Even people who are very successful, especially people who are quite successful, that they achieve this outer success. They do a good job. They do a good job with the first step. They dream really big. They have a great vision of something exciting they want to do. It's interesting. It's exciting to them. And they even, they, you know, they work hard and they achieve that goal. They create that vision. You know, they start their own company. They travel the world. They become rich. They get in great physical shape. They become a professional athlete. You know, whatever it is, they achieve that. But then they're not happy. They feel some kind of emptiness inside like, well, I, I, I got this. It seemed like such an exciting goal. It was such an exciting vision. But now it's real and I don't feel very happy. It just something's missing. That's what's missing. Missing is the deeper purpose, the deeper values, the deeper principles, the deeper meaning. That's what's missing. They didn't connect that exciting dream to something deeper inside them. And that's why there's the emptiness there. They get the money, but it's just like, well, I've got money. I've got nice things. That's fun for a very short time. It's fun for a few months. And then it's kind of, well, hmm. now what? That's what they, that's what they often think. Now what? On the other hand, people who uh, are successful entrepreneurs, right, business owners, who start a business, but it's connected to a deeper value that business is more than just money. Of course, they're trying to make money, but it's more than just that. When they achieve the success, there's a much deeper feeling of, of happiness, and it continues because when they get rich, they don't stop because they still have that big purpose. If the purpose is to help people, well, they become rich, but they still can help people. In fact, they're rich so they can help even more people. So they keep working. They keep doing it. They don't stop. So important to do this. So important to do this. Don't skip this step because you don't want to work years and years, possibly, on a big goal it seems so exciting and you work 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 and after all that time and effort, you achieve the success and then you don't feel happy. That's terrible. That's a terrible, terrible thing. So don't skip this step. You've got to find the deeper values that connect to each goal. Very important. Okay. You do that for each one. What's the next step? Step number three. Step number three can be a little difficult sometimes, but it's still important. The next step after you connect to the values, now you've got all your, your big visions, dreams, exciting, and each one has a couple different values that are deep and important to you. Really good. You're getting more clear now. Next thing you have to do is rank them. Rank them. That means put them in order of importance. So number one is the most important one. Number two is second of importance, right? Second most important. Number three, third most important. Number four, number five, number six, etc. Now, this can seem difficult because they all probably seem important, right? Well, my health is important and, uh, you know, my uh, religion or, or uh, uh, spiritual practice is important and my family is important and my business is important. Money is important, right? I mean, they're all important. They all feel important socially. My friends are important. So, they can all feel important. But, you know, that just it's the simple truth in life is that with our minds and our lives, we have limited time and we have limited mental energy and focus. And so it's important to figure out 
what is most important? What's number one? Because that's the one you're going to focus on first and most. And what's number two? That'll, that's second most. And what's number three? And really, it's the top three that are the ones you will try hardest with. You know, if you have, if you have eight goals, eight big dreams... It's very, very difficult to work on all of them at the same amount, with the same energy, the same time. It's very hard to achieve all of those big goals all at once. You probably need to wait for some of them. Choose the top three and work on them really hard. Achieve the top three and then later work on the next three. Something like that. Really... You might be different. I find three is enough. Three is kind of the maximum. One, two, or three big goals. I'm not talking about small goals. I'm talking about one, two, or three big goals for the year or for a long term. That's really the maximum. After that, it's you're not really focusing anymore, right? You're becoming, you're trying to do too much. You can still improve in other areas of your life, of course. You're still going to do work in other areas of your life, of course. But putting your maximum energy, really, three is the most. So I want you to rank them. And this can be hard sometimes because you have to choose between, ah, which one do I focus on, this one or this one? Now, remember, when you're choosing this, it doesn't mean that if you choose number one as most important, it doesn't mean it's always most important. It just means this year. Okay, so you're just, you're ranking, right? Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, etc. You're ranking them just for this year, just for 2019. And 2020, maybe you'll change it. So, for example, what if, you, if your health is really bad? If your health is bad, you're overweight, you're tired, and your, your health and your fitness is causing a lot of problems in your life. It's affecting your business because you're too tired to work hard. Uh, it's affecting, you know, maybe starting your own business. You're too tired to launch your own business because physically you don't have enough energy. It's affecting you as a parent. It's affecting all these different areas of your life. So maybe you decide, you know what, this year health and fitness has got to be number one and that's your number one for this year and then you're going to work on it work on it work on it as your number one priority but maybe it, if you do a good job in 2000 at the end of 2019 after one year maybe you're in great physical shape you're doing well you're feeling fantastic so next year you do this again maybe health and fitness will not be number one Still important, but maybe you'll need less energy, right? You'll have good habits. You'll be feeling good. So you just need to maintain your good health, your good fitness. That does not require so much energy just to maintain it. If you already have it, it's easier to keep it. But if you're doing really badly, sometimes you have to really focus and make it your number one priority, you know, your top focus for a while until you make enough good changes. Just like with your English, it's the same idea, right? If your English is not that great, so-so, or you're not happy with it, well, maybe in 2019, English needs to be number one and you're going to work, 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 work. And at the end of 2019, maybe you're very fluent You improve your English a lot. Your pronunciation's very good. You're feeling very good about your English speaking. So next year, maybe for 2020, maybe something else is number one. Maybe English, you can use a little less focus, a little less energy, you know, in one year or two years from now. So they can change each year. My point is each year, the priorities change. So you're just thinking about it, you know, this year really of these dreams, which one will give me the most happiness now? Which one will affect my life the most in a good way, in a positive way? Which one will affect the people that I care about the most in a positive way? There's not, again, there's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. You just have to decide this yourself in each of these areas, each of these dreams and visions, each of these values that connect to them, you have to decide, okay, this year, what's number one? And then what's number two? And then what's number three? Really, you just need the top three. 
Focus on the top three. Number one, number two, and number three. You have to identify your top three most important priorities, visions, goals for 2019, for next year. And you rank them. Don't just choose three. You have to decide what's number one, what's number two, and what's number three. Number one is most important. Number two is second most. And number three is third most. Your top three. Okay, and then finally, uh, for today, after you do this, you, you, you choose number one, number two, number three. The final step for today is to create a specific goal for each one. This is where we get to kind of the normal goal setting. You're probably used to this. You've heard about this. It's very common. Lots of books talk about it. This is where you decide a specific thing, you a specific result that you want for each of these three dreams or visions. And for the specific goal, it's good to have a result that's very clear. A lot of people say it should be something you can measure. Um, yeah, not necessarily. I mean, that that's a good idea. Something you can measure is a very good idea. It's very clear. But I'll just, 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 just so you're clear, it just needs to be a goal that's very clear. So you know, at the end of 2019, you will know definitely. Did you do it or did you not do it? Okay, that's the main thing. So again, health and fitness. Okay, so it, you need a specific goal. Let's say your first, your number one is health and fitness. So I want, you need to have a specific goal for that. Make it more specific. That's very general. I want to be healthier. I want to be more fit. So, you know, I want, make it specific. You could say I want to finish, uh, I'm going to finish, uh, I'm going to run a marathon less than four hours or less than five hours, whatever. Or I'm going to uh, bench press my body weight, the, the same weight as, my, as I weigh, as my body. Or I'm going to do, you know, 10 pull-ups by the end of the year and 50 push-ups, you know, in two minutes. Whatever, it doesn't matter, right? Just, just make it specific. What are some things? How would you know that you're more fit? How would you know you're healthier? If, if weight, if you're more concerned about your weight because you're overweight, you've got too much fat, well, then you might, um, you know, you might have a specific weight you, you want to have or be below. You might do measurements, right, for your waist, you know, how many centimeters around. You decide. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But just, you know, choose some specific things for each of these three, right? You have your top three. Well, choose some specific goals for each one. This just focuses you more so that you really know, ah, yes, I'm definitely making progress. All right, definitely I have achieved this or definitely I have not achieved this. Either way. So that's the last thing you're going to do with each one of those, your top three specific goals for each one. You can have a couple goals for each of these categories, each of your top three. For English, what would a specific goal be? I mean, it can also be something like I will, um, I will listen to BIP lessons every day for the whole year. You know, or you could count hours. I will listen to BIP lessons for 400 hours total in 2019 and you could actually count each day you listen to your lessons you could count the number of hours you listened some people like to do that they count the hours you could count hours you could count days or you could just say I'm going to do the pronounce I mean the uh, power English course and I'll do it every day I'm going to follow the exact schedule and I'm going to complete the whole course in 2019 it's another way you could measure it some of you guys like tests. I don't really like tests, but some of you guys do like tests. So you could, your goal could be something like a specific uh, score on the TOEFL exam. Or maybe you could say, I'm going to um, travel to an English speaking country and have a conversation with people and use English to get hotels and talk to people. And that could be it. That's kind of a fun goal. You could do something like that. 
Uh, other Effortless English members and VIP members have done things like uh, they want a specific job or they want to interview in English for a certain job in their company or another company. And they want to have a successful job interview in English. That's a nice goal. You can decide. You decide. But the, the key idea is choose some specific things because that will focus your mind quite clearly. And choose them for... These are one-year goals. So it's what do you want to accomplish after one year. So at the end of 2019, December 2019, what results do you want in these top three areas? All right, that's it. That is the basic process. Tomorrow we'll talk a little more about how you're going to achieve these. So you have your your big top three. You have specific goals in each one. You have connected each one to deeper values, character. So the final question is really, well, okay, now how do I do it? I have 12 months. I have one year to do this. How do I accomplish it, right? What do I do each day, each week? How do I stay focused? How do I stay motivated? How do I get those results? We'll talk about that in tomorrow's show more. Meanwhile, I hope you have a great New Year's Eve. Like I said, it's a New Year. I'm recording this New Year's Eve. It is New Year's Eve. That means tonight at midnight, the New Year arrives. I'm curious what your New Year's Eve traditions are. I know they're different in different countries. Let's see. In the United States, the New Year's Eve traditions, uh, it's pretty basic, actually. Um, Really, Christmas is the deeper more traditional holiday in the United States. So New Year's Eve, at least during my lifetime, is basically just a party, (laughs) right? I mean, basically people have parties on New Year's Eve, the night of New Year's Eve. Some people, a lot of people actually will go out, especially younger people. They'll go out to clubs and they'll see bands. They'll see music, you know, go see somebody play some of their fa- uh, a, a favorite bands a band that they like and they'll a lot of the bands will have shows on New Year's Eve late so they'll play late and then at midnight they'll stop the show for a few minutes and they'll say happy new year yay and everybody will you know jump around and cheer and then they'll continue playing um, some of you guys know my my uh, one of my best friends uh, Joe from learnrealenglish.com uh, Joe, he's a big fan. I also am a fan of the band Fish. It's an American band. Fish, but it's spelled P-H-I-S-H, Fish. Kind of a jazz rock type band. Anyway, uh, Fish, this is a big tradition of theirs. They always play on New Year's Eve. Last year they played New York. I'm not sure this year where they're playing, but they, they'll play like a big show on New Year's Eve, and this is exactly what they do. They'll play late, so... When, Exactly at midnight, they stop the show and they do crazy stuff and they drop balloons and all these lights and everybody, you know, yay, goes crazy for a few minutes and then they continue their show. It's kind of fun. So this is quite common. Uh, Big shows and also little shows, small clubs, bars, lots of people do that. Uh, Other people, people who have families and kids, things like that, typically just stay home for New Year's Eve, but it's common to stay up late. I remember, you know, my parents, when I was a kid, my parents would uh, let me stay up till midnight uh, on New Year's Eve, if I could stay awake. Sometimes I would fall asleep (laughs) because I was a kid, but sometimes I would stay awake and they would just watch TV and on TV they'll show fireworks sometimes in big cities. They have fireworks and they do little music shows and things. So I remember watching that as a kid. Um, That's also common. So people have, some people have parties in their home, in their homes. So they'll, they'll have like dinner parties or something like that. So basically, it's just party. It's just a celebration. Like, yay, everybody has a good time. And then at midnight, you know, the countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 3, 2, 1, bye. Happy New Year. Woo. And like I said, the big cities have fireworks. That's America. Also in America, quite typical on New Year's Day, so January 1st, it's quite common for people to have, um, uh, I don't know what you call it. 
kind of kind of a lunch party brunch <laughs> breakfast and lunch if you put those two words together it's called brunch and um that's actually pretty common too a lot of people on new year's day will invite family and friends to come to their house and they'll have a little party not a party like drinking and music but just more like uh everyone you know sit around watch football games eat food kind of a very relaxing type of uh, family and friends. Uh, we could call it a brunch party, I guess. That's also quite a common thing on New Year's Day, the next day, the first day. Here in Japan, they have different traditions. On uh, New Year's Eve, for example, tonight, we will eat soba. Soba. What's soba? Soba are noodles they're buckwheat noodles. Looks like spaghetti, but very a very dark brown spaghetti made from buckwheat, which is a kind of flour. And they're there. It's a typical Japanese food, soba. Really nice, very very tasty food. And uh, they Japanese people, families and people will often eat soba on New Year's Eve. Different reasons for that. You know, one idea is, you know, this, the noodles are long. So the idea is that, you know, you're eating the long noodles and this will give you a long, hopefully, you know, good luck and a long life and different things like that. On New Year's Day, it's very common, a big family get together. I guess a little bit like the American style, you know, to come during the day and have a lunch or a late lunch or early dinner together all the big family extended family so you know grandparents and and kids and grandkids all together in the house and they'll eat this uh, kind of traditional food um which kind of, uh, often will come in these big boxes and these l lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of little dishes and I don't know the names of any of the dishes, right? But there, a lot of them are kind of special kinds of Japanese food, little small dishes that are, are um, special and, and eaten mostly just at this time of year, New Year. So a lot of Japanese people get very excited because, oh, I get to try, you know, they, they'll have their different favorite ones. I don't really know what they are. I don't know the names because there's so many. I mean, lots, like 20, 30 or more of these little dishes. It's very colorful, very interesting. I just grab ones that look interesting and eat them. <laughs> they taste good, but I don't know their names. Uh, but the, again, it's kind of a family get together, which is also very nice. If you like, you can uh, share your traditions for New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Tell me, what do you do in your country, in your culture? You can uh, do that on Gab. Gab.com, G-A-B.com, Gab.com. And follow me, A.J. Hogue, A-J-H-O-G-E, A.J. Hogue. Tell me on Gab. Or, of course, you can do the same on Twitter, same account, name, A.J. Hogue. Tell me your traditions. I'll share with the other members. We can all share our different New Year's Eve and New Year's Day traditions. But whatever your tradition is, I wish you a very, very happy New Year. Have a great New Year's Eve. I think Japan, we're very far east, so we're probably, you know, we're one of the first, certainly one of the first big countries to hit midnight. So everybody else, be safe tonight. Don't drink and drive. Be careful and have a great, great, great New Year's Eve. And we'll be back again for New Year's Day. And let's all have a fantastic, wonderful, positive 2019. Happy New Year. And of course, join my VIP program. Get started. Commit for 2019. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. It's a good time to go now to EffortlessEnglishClub.com to the website EffortlessEnglishClub.com and join and commit to that VIP program at going to go to at EffortlessEnglishClub.com.